This particular video is going to be focused on an introduction to confidence intervals to try to get an idea of what are they and then the basics of how we can compute them. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at question 10-2, which is on page 625 in your book. So if you would find that page 625, read question 10-2 and try to decide which of the following explanations could be correct. Assuming that you've read that and that you've decided which one or ones are correct, I have to let you know um, that there's actually only one interpretation there that's correct. There's one that's close, and there are three that are definitely wrong. So first, let's put this confidence interval up here. It's 107.8 comma 116.2, and it's supposed to be a 95% confidence interval. So let's examine each one of the interpretations and find the one that's correct. A says there is a 95% probability or chance that the interval contains the true parameter. Um, that is incorrect because this particular interval either does contain the parameter or does not. So really the probability that it contains the parameter is either 0 or 1. It's either in there or it's not. The problem is we don't know which one. So A is not correct. B there is a 95% chance that the interval contains x-bar. Well, in this case, the thing that's a little strange there is the idea of x-bar. Of course, the interval is based on cent and centered around x-bar. So there's it, the uh, probability that, or the chance, that the interval contains x-bar is 100%. It's definitely going to be in there. Let's look at C. This interval was constructed using a method that results in intervals which capture the true mean in 95% of all possible samples. Now this one's close, but it's also incorrect, because remember that each sample yields a different mean, and that those means make their own distribution. It's that distribution which allows us to try to make an estimate of the population mean. So it's very close, but it's not quite right. D. 95% of all possible samples will contain that interval. Well, that's definitely incorrect. Any one particular interval from one particular sample is not magical, it's not unique, it's just one particular interval. The only one that could be considered correct is E. And on E, it says the probability that the interval captures mu is either 1 or 0, but we don't know which. That is, in fact, the correct interpretation. You want to remember that the true parameter is either in there or it's not. So you might wonder, well, what is a confidence interval anyway? If you go back to the definition on page 622, it says a confidence level, C, gives the probability that the interval will capture the true parameter value in repeated samples. So it's more like a success rate. How often will an interval constructed in this way successfully capture the mean? Well, it's going to do it, in this case, 95% of the time um, with many, many, many samples. Okay, let's go to question 10-3. When you look at question 10-3, it says that a 95% confidence interval um, is given. And you're asked to explain the meaning of the interval, and it says 95% of all young men have scores between those two uh, values. Is it right? And the answer is no in that particular case because um, we're not talking about any one particular individual. We're talking about a mean and identifying that mean for a large group of scores. So in that case, in 10.3, the answer is no, the student is not correct. Okay, that gets you a little bit of an idea of what a confidence interval is. Now, how do you calculate one? Well, we're going to take a look at question 10.7 to answer the question, but we do need to have a particular formula here, and it looks like this. This formula, which is actually on your purple sheet, perhaps in a slightly different form, is what allows us to calculate the confidence interval for a particular, for a mean in this case. Why a mean? Well, if you'll notice, x bar indicates that we're using a sample mean, and we're taking sigma divided by the square root of n. That's also a formula that's connected to means. So what we're going to have to do is find this value here called z star. Okay. Now this particular value uh, just determines 
the area that corresponds to the confidence level. So we're going to do an example here in just a minute to see what that looks like. In question seven, uh, in fact, we're going to find a Z star. Number seven, ten seven, which is on page 632. Take a moment to read that question, and then we'll go ahead and calculate it together. All right, if you've read question seven, you know that it makes reference to a figure that looks like this from the previous page. But this time they want us to change the area in the center to uh, find out, in this particular case, what Z values down here, Z star would be here, and negative Z star would be here, would give us an area of 0.975 in the two tails. Now obviously my picture is not drawn to scale. The question is, how much area is in this tail and in this tail? So to find that, of course, we're going to take 1 minus 0.975. And then we're going to have to divide that by 2 because there are two tails. So when we do that, we're going to get 0 0.0125 for each tail. Now we can look up that number in our table to try to figure out which z gives us that area. I'd probably look up uh, this number in the table trying to find the opposite of z star down here. When you do that, um, you're going to get about 2.24. You can also do inverse normal of the calculation that we had up in here, and that would also give you the same uh, calculation. But 2.24 is what we're looking for here. What that's going to tell us then is as we get more confident, Z star is going to get larger. If we're willing to be less confident, it's going to be smaller. Okay, so let's do something with that, um, uh, or a similar number to that in question 9. Okay, question 10.9. This is sort of the how will we calculate a confidence interval using the formula that we just saw. Um, you have a set of data. Um, if you need to stop the tape and, or stop the video and kind of look at the data and see what's there, it asks you to do a couple of things with it. So take a moment to read that. Now it's a good idea for us to make a few comments here. The first thing would be let's identify any numbers that we can and what they correspond to. We're given 70, sorry, 31 seventh grade girls. So 31 would have to stand for N. That would be our sample size. We're supposed to treat them as an SRS. That's good news because we need that. And they're supposed to be an SRS of all seventh grade girls. Suppose the standard deviation is known to be about 15. Now notice in this case, if we look at the formula for the confidence interval calculation, we have some things that we need and we're missing some things. We don't have x bar, we don't have z star, we do have sigma, we do have n. So we're going to need to determine what those are. Notice that A asks us to calculate and interpret a 99% confidence interval. And so using the techniques that we've done earlier in question 7, we can find out that z star in that case is 2.576 or we could just say 2.58 would be fine as well. X bar, well, we'd have to get that from actually taking the 31 scores and computing their average, which we could do on a calculator. Turns out that's 105.84. So now we're going to take those four numbers that we have and put them into the formula. So here's what we get for the interval. We start with 105.84. We're going to say plus or minus the margin of error, which we're about to calculate. So we're going to put our 2.576. And then in parentheses, we'll have 15 divided by the square root of 31. When you crunch that, what you should do is try to get one number for all of this to identify the margin of error and express your interval in one of two ways. 105.84 plus or minus the one number that you get when you do all of that, which is 6.94. Notice I have the same number of significant digits here as here, which kind of makes sense. Then you can write that as an interval in parentheses with the lower end of the interval listed first, which is what you get when you subtract 105 minus 6.94, and then a comma, 
and then the upper interval, upper end of the interval, 0.78. So that would be the value of the confidence interval in this particular case. Now what we also want to do is we want to get a statement that puts all of this back into context and identifies the confidence interval. So this is going to be one of those sentences that you're going to want to learn as a canned sentence. Here it is. We would say with 99% confidence, we estimate, critical phrase there, what are we estimating? The mean IQ score for all 7th grade girls in the district to be between 98.90 and 112.78 points. Notice the pieces in this sentence. We state our confidence level first, use the phrase we estimate because that's what we're doing. We have to say what we're estimating in context. Notice we use the word mean here. We could also say the proportion if we were estimating a proportion. Then we state what it is we're estimating. This is where it becomes uh, important to state context, context to be between. Here's our lower and upper limits and units on the end. This is the type of sentence that you're going to have to memorize the format for, and then you can plug in the pieces as you go. Part B asks, if these girls had actually come from one teacher's class, how would your work have changed? Well, it would be difficult for us to treat this as an SRS if these were simply the girls in one class because we don't know how they were assigned. Were they assigned randomly? Um, could every student that was a seventh grade girl have the opportunity to be in that teacher's class? If there's more than one school, certainly that would be, the answer to that would be no. We would not be able to use these methods based on that because we would not be confident that we had an SRS. So that's the end of question nine. What would be really good for you to try to do is work on um, question eight, which is very similar to this, and question 10. That would give you a chance to um, try out uh, the process. I'm going to give you the answers to those questions so you can check your work. So for 10-8, for your reference later on, your correct answer you should get uh, should be that Z star is 1.88. And in question 10-10, you're asked to um, construct and interpret a, a confidence interval. So I'll go ahead and give you the sentence that uh, you should have here. You should say, with 99% confidence, we estimate the true concentration of the active ingredient for this specimen to be between 0 0.8303 and 0 0.8505 grams per liter. And that would be the correct value for the, uh, for the uh, confidence interval.